All right. Welcome back, everybody. Yesterday, Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. Big story. I had this up on my website early in the morning and didn't get a chance to make a video. And that's because it's March Madness. And again, we got a lot of sports fanatics. So we had to get through all of the March Madness decoding, which is a lot of work to do, needless to say, every year. Anyhow, this story right here is a reminder that all roads lead to Rome, and it's another sign of who really runs Israel and who really runs the United States, which is the same Jesuit cabal. I want you to see how perfect this ritual is. Again, last week, Chuck Schumer challenged Netanyahu to step down and have new elections in Israel because of his mishandling of the war in Gaza. And as we talked about, that was on the 74th day of the leap year. It was Pi Day, March 14th. And again, Netanyahu's 74 years old right now. And he began his killing campaign in Gaza while Gaza was 74 years old. And of course, in Gematria, 74 is a fateful number. It's used to remember the killing of Caesar in the Senate. You had Chuck Schumer of the Senate take on Netanyahu the day before the Ides of March. But remember, in Gematria, Jewish equals 74. Of course, Netanyahu's Jewish, so is Chuck Schumer. A lot of New York cities on the 74th meridian. But also in Gematria, English equals 74. Gematria itself, occult, Masonic. The word killing, the word stabbing, typically the Ides of March to remember the killing of Caesar by stabbing. And let's not forget that on Netanyahu's 74th birthday, the Jewish woman who's connected to the politicians in Michigan was stabbed to death. And that was on Netanyahu's 74th birthday, October 21st last year. So you had this big ritual last week. And now this week, yesterday... Netanyahu meets with the Republicans in the Senate to talk about the divisiveness of what Schumer is doing. And look at the ritual of the meeting yesterday. I mean, it's just undeniable. We talked about this number a gazillion times with Israel. It was the 119th day of Chuck Schumer's age. Okay. And in Gematria, Star of David equates to 119. Just like all those words that we just talked about, the equal 74. That cipher is A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, E is 5, up to Z, the 26 letters, 26. But with that same cipher, Star of David's 119, like Orthodox, like Foundation. You use the numerology cipher, Ashkenazi Jews is 119. But 119, big number in Israel's history. We know on September 11th, the date that can be written, 11 slash 9, you know, certain, a certain group of people got a, a memo not to show up for work that day. But also notice, if you apply numerology, Star of David, Orthodox, and Foundation are all 47. Yesterday had a lesser date numerology of 47. You get that by just adding 3 plus 20 plus 24 for March 20th, 2024. 20, so 47 date numerology. And we know in D.C. everything's 47. Again, if you're new here, there's four base ciphers of the English language. You're looking at two of them, the alphabetic order and the alphabetic order with numerology. The other two are just running the alphabetic order in reverse and in reverse with numerology. You look at those four ciphers, again, all these things equal 47 in D.C., government, authority, Republican, Democrat, White House, president, the word Caesar, D.C., the letters D and C are 47 when you run the alphabetic order in reverse. So just huge number in D.C., but also big number with authority, period. And let's not forget that Israel was drawn up. In 47, Israel was drawn up by the United Nations on September 3rd, 47. It officially became a nation the next year, 1948. I forgot to put up the Gematria calculator here. I want to talk about the other big 11947 pairing in light of all roads leading to Rome. Notice how Vatican, again, has that Gematria of 119 and 47 when you run the alphabetic order in reverse. For people who are new here, let's not forget the Super Bowl. We just had the first ever Super Bowl on the Vatican's establishment anniversary February 11th and the winning score was 25 and the score was 25 to 22 at 47 points first Super Bowl season was the 47th season of the NFL the the over under for the game was set at 47 and a half it was in Nevada as well which is also 47 only two states equal 47 in the most simple cipher that's Ohio and Nevada in 2016 the Republican uh, first debate was in Ohio. The Democratic first debate was in Nevada. Again, President, White House, government, they're all 47, like those states. But Vatican's 119 and 47, and so is Francis. 
Francis is 119 and 47. We're in the time of the first Jesuit Pope, Pope Francis. Trump has that 119 and 47 co uh, connection, and so does Underwood. I uh, remember the hit show House of Cards and the time Trump won last time. Trump cards, House of Cards. But the president in that show was Francis Underwood, played by Kevin Spacey. Anyway, this 11947 is an important combination. On September 11th, the third building to fall that day was Building 7. Each floor was 47,000 square feet in floor space. The building was 47 floors tall. 47 floors tall. Um, but yeah, big number pairing, 119 and 47. And, and by the way, for the people trying to criticize my work on September 11th about how two towers became zero before they became one, there's no criticism there. They were the twin towers. They were two, and they became zero, and then they became one World Trade Center. Yeah, Building 7 did fall seven hours later in the day that was 47 floors tall, but most of them don't even know about that. And that the one World Trade Center didn't replace that. It replaced the twin towers. So yes, the two twin towers became zero before they became one. I see too many people in my comments like trying to criticize that. If you're new here, you don't know about the 201, but it's also huge with the Jesuits. And that's why they're the first living sweet 201 at the Vatican. And that's why Netanyahu left in a 201 ritual and came back in a big 201 ritual. And state of Israel equals 201. And the first prime minister of that nation, David Ben-Gurion, died 201 days after the anniversary of its establishment. <laughs> anyway, the things we talk about all the time. 119, 47, 201, numbers of the Vatican, numbers of the Jesuits, numbers very important to 9-11 and its ritual. Okay, so here's the other piece. Yesterday was March 20th, 320 as we write it in the U.S., and that was the 80th day of the leap year. The Pope's birthday is Saturnalia, December 17th, the day leaving 14 days left in the year. So 14 plus 80 is 94, right? So it was 94 days after the Pope's birthday on 320. And we've seen these numbers come together plenty of times, 94 and 320. And here I'll give you a good example. Again, Roman Catholic Church is 320 and 94. And remember, the Roman Catholic Church has celebrated Jesus' birthday on 1225 since 320 AD when it was first suggested. Never forget the Jesuit ritual with George Floyd. It was a massive 201 ritual, but they pulled him out of a Mercedes-Benz ML 320, and they killed him in front of Police Cruiser 320. And the Twin Cities, so those twins again, are very Catholic, and they're off Interstate 94. But 32094 Roman Catholic Church pairing. And uh, again, Netanyahu meeting with the Senate, going back to this Ides of March tribute, which goes back to Rome. If it was 94 days after the Pope's birthday, that also means it was 129 days after the Superior General's birthday, because the Pope and the Superior General are born 35 days apart, like Catholic equals 35. Like 1225 has a square root of 35, the day the Catholic Church celebrates the sun in the sky's birthday and the son of God's birthday. And again, the Catholic Church gave us the language and the calendar and the word sun describes both things. And yet people can't figure out the obvious word play and ritualism and deception because they're so caught up in their beliefs. The word would lie right in the middle and all their indoctrination, which really does start with the church. Again, the first government of the world essentially was the Catholic Church. And again, we're on their calendar. We're in a nation speaking English, which came from their church, where they set up camp in D.C. before it was the federal city. Anyway, don't forget, Washington, D.C. used to be called Rome on the Potomac and let all roads lead into Rome. And it used to be owned by Francis Pope, not to be confused with the first Jesuit Pope, Pope Francis. And the Jesuits were created in France. And the French Freemason, Léon Font, laid out France. And modern Freemasonry is a Jesuit creation. And we're in the time of the 266th Pope and the Jesuit motto, is Sus Salvatoris 266. And he spoke in D.C. on the 266th day of the year. I could go back down memory lane with uh, Chuck Schumer's recent father's death, which was a huge Jesuit ritual. And here, I, I forget off the top of my head, but I, I feel like uh, the Chuck Schumer name gematria is also another big clue. Yeah, Chuck Schumer's got the 191 in his name, like Society of Jesus, 52 like Pope, 133 like government. But yeah, just think about it. Netanyahu meeting the, with the Republicans about what Net or what Schumer did the week before, 
battle of again it's nothing but political theater at the end of the day there's no separation between netanyahu and schumer they're just trying to do what they always do it's always the same tricks from it's politics right politics politics it's always the same thing it's creating this theater to get people to divide and point the finger at the other party and at the end of the day when the curtain closes when the political theater is over these people are all best friends behind the scenes you know, it's like Donald Trump chanting lock her up about Hillary when, you know, just a few years earlier, he was praising the Clinton family and how close they are and how they eat dinner together. And people just keep falling for the same old theater. And you learn this little number code. You see how it's all by the numbers. And, and by the way, here, here's the one other piece I didn't cover. From the start of the war to this thing that just happened yesterday was 165 days after the war began. Again, the war began on the day leaving 85 days left in the year. This went down on the 80th day of the year, so 165 days later. The Scottish Rite has their headquarters in Washington, D.C. And remember, the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, the rites were written by Jesuit priests. Scottish Rite's 165. The small way, it's 57. Rome is also 57. George is 57. Georgetown is 57. Again, the first Jesuit university, Georgetown, established in 1789, the year George Washington was inaugurated at age 57. But the Scottish Rite is known for being the most Jewish branch of Freemasonry. And of course, the Star of David, along with the phrase, all is number, is etched all over Masonic temples, Scottish Rite temples. You got Star of David's all over the place. And again, this goes down on the 119th day of Schumer's age. But yeah, look, look into the Scottish Rite and what they put on their temple. I mean, the Star of David's all over the thing, just like the Star of David's on the dollar bill. And... Um, Again, the Scottish Rite's known for be being the most Jewish branch of Freemasonry. But, but at the end of the day, all, all of Freemasonry is pretty much Jew Jewish. Uh, Freemasonry is known as Judaism for the Gentile because it's based in the Old Testament. And remember, the fourth book of the Bible in the Torah is called Numbers. Masonic temples, all is numbered, teachings based in the Old Testament, Jewish teachings, Freemasonry based in Kabbalah, which is Jewish mysticism. Let's not forget Jewish mysticism equals 201, like the state of Israel. And, and that was the other thing about this ritual with the 201. This meeting was 201 days before the upcoming one-year anniversary of the war as well, which, of course, will be October 7th, the anniversary of us invading Afghanistan after two towers became zero before they became one. And... Um, Yeah, those are those are all the main points I wanted to address here. But yeah, mega ritual yesterday in the Senate. And if only we could get the people to wake up to the show. So yeah, we'll leave it there for now, True Seeker. Um, I might be streaming a lot today since it's March Madness. I, I might just do an all-day stream for March Madness, just talking about rig basketball, number rituals, kind of like we did for the Super Bowl. I'll just open that up to the public. So you might see me streaming before long. You might not get a notification because usually when I do two live streams in a day, nobody gets a live stream for the second notification. So you just have to click on the channel and see if it says we're live. But yeah, I have to run a few errands real quick. And then um, it, it might be a day of of being a, an American sitting on my ass watching rig basketball only for the sake of exposing the big rig. And by the way, just a little heads up to all you guys out there who, who do watch the tournament, have family that watch the tournament. Remember, two years ago was the 83rd March Madness tournament. Only one team scored 83 in the opening round. It was Kansas. They went on to win the tournament. Kansas equals 65 in Gematria. They won the tournament 65 days after the state's birthday. Last year was the 84th tournament. UConn's coach got to 8-4 and four in the tournament all-time winning it. But the big clue in the opening round was there was one only 184 ritual in the opening round, and it was for UConn. Nobody scored 84 in the opening round, but what they did in the UConn game is after UConn scored their 84th points, they stopped the game and they said there was a snag in the net, and there was nothing wrong with the net. It was just total ritual. But they stopped the game and they took down the net for UConn, and we said right then, we said, well, that's what you do in college basketball and you win the championship, you take down the nets. And sure enough, UConn went on to win the rig championship Again, it was their 120th season last year. They outscored all their opponents by a total of 120 points. All tournament, they showed you the Coke ad with the Hashim Tabit jersey. Hashim Tabit equals 120 in Gematria, former UConn star. 
Again, you take this knowledge, you see right through the rigging of college sports, pro sports, the election, the news every single day. And if you're new here, I'm saying the same things every single day. I think that's why some people just like leave each other. Like he says the same things every day. Hey, there's always new people here and we're trying to reach new people every day. So we got to say the same things because it's absolutely a million percent true. All right, True Sicker, we'll leave it there and uh, probably see you pretty soon in another live stream. And, and by the way, shout out to RPM Trey. And oh, one more thing I want to make an announcement about. I've been offered several sponsorships over the years and I've always turned it down because I, I can't stand when I watch a YouTube channel and they're taking a break every five minutes to stick in an ad and promote this. It just like breaks the whole flow. So I've, I've always turned down sponsorship ads and for the first time ever, I accepted one and they sent me a contract the other week and I told them that I'm not signing on that and I'm not doing that because it asked me to do a 45 second to one minute ad in every video, every podcast. And I said, I, I just said back, I said, this is the only way I'll do the sponsorship. You send me a coffee mug with your brand on it and I'll occasionally show the mug and explain why I'm actually supporting your company. And here, I, I haven't even, we haven't even signed the contract yet, you guys, but I'm going to tell you also why I took it. The, the, it's also a really small thing. It's the smallest amount of money I've ever been offered for a sponsorship, but there's one reason I did it. It's because the guy who works for the company is a big supporter of my work. And he proved that to me because he knew like everything about my work. He, he wasn't just some bullshitter and it's a small startup company and the product they sell is something that almost everybody drinks in the morning. And for anyone out there in my community that goes to Starbucks, remember Starbucks is owned by the evil empire and they overcharge for coffee. If I have anybody out there that goes to Starbucks, I'm really doing this sponsorship also for this reason. Stop spending your money at the evil empire. If you're addicted to Starbucks, why? It's overpriced. There's really nothing special about it. It's just like I went to business school and, and we learned about how, you know, you can put a false soda in a Coke can and people will love that soda just because it's the Coke can. But here, here's the name of this company. And I I, I don't even have the, uh, the affiliate sponsor link or anything, but the coffee cup showed up early. He said it was going to come Friday or maybe next week. It, it showed up yesterday in the mail. So this will be the name of the company if you want to check them out. Monero Coffee. Monero Coffee. Small startup company. And uh, again, the, the guy who runs their marketing, he's a real truth seeker. So I said, okay, we, we, we can do this. But and for, I, I don't, I hear, just understand that the amount of the sponsorship is, is super tiny. It really is the least I've ever been offered for a sponsorship, but I'm only doing it because he said I can just hold up the, well, I, I, I agreed to the terms. I said, I'll, I'll show the Monero coffee cup, but I'm not, I'm not doing one minute ads in every video for the coffee. No way. So you, you'll see me drinking from my new Monero coffee cup. And, and they did send me some Monero coffee, which is nice. And I already drank it. So I, I don't have it in the cup right now. But yeah, in the future, there will be an affiliate link there. And really, for all the people who drink coffee and drink it from these big corporations, maybe maybe think about switching up to a small company that would back a truth seeker. So anyway, that will be one change. And um, yeah, so shout out to them and shout out to the gentleman running the marketing. And shout out to Sarah Sutherland as well. I just can't stop her with her generosity. I thought I finally got her to stop because she just donated too much in the past, but she's back again. And, and thank you, Sarah. For people who don't know what she's saying, congratulations about. Like I, I tucked it in at the end of a long video and um, I'll talk about it again at some point in the future. But if you don't know what she's talking about, we, we do have some big news in about November. So yeah, lots to get done before November. And I swear there just aren't enough hours in a day. <laughs> Ted says sellout. Uh, hard, it's hard. It's hard. It's hardly a sellout, man. The uh, the Monero coffee coffee sponsorship will uh, will net about uh, one or two dinners eating out with sweet lady a month. It, it's a very it's a very small endorsement, but I just wanted to be forthright about um, you know that we're accepting the first sponsorship ever in, in the decade plus of doing this. So. All right, we'll leave it there, you guys, and I'll see you soon. Till next time.